Hello everybody! Recently I have seen circulation of advice on Reddit, on Discord, uh, etc. of people suggesting that statistics are useful in OTP to predict player performance going forwards in addition to your scouts. So what I'm going to be doing today is very simply, as strongly and emphatically as I can, debunking this claim because it's absolute hogswash to me. I cannot understand why people are recommending this, and I think it is absolutely ridiculous that it is actually being circulated. So I'm going to be giving you guys extensive reasons why statistics should never be used in player evaluation, and why ratings are completely reliable in OTP. So anyways, let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to start with a couple examples of players where the statistics would be extremely misleading to rely upon. So you'll notice I have 100% scouting accuracy here. There's absolutely no flaws from scouts, no questions to be asked. And uh, well, let's go ahead and jump into it. So first off, we've got here Andres Jimenez. Now, looking at his ratings here, which is, of course, what I would naturally expect people to rely on and uh, what I would naturally advise people to rely on. He's got slightly above average contact with average home run power and avoid case, so he's probably got a solid BABIP. Uh, gap power slightly above average, home run power, eye, discipline, and avoid case are all average. Base running solid, defense is strong at second base, not really good at shortstop, but he's a pretty good player overall. Now, is he a 140 OPS plus 6.5 war player? Absolutely not. He is not a good enough player to be leading the AL in on-base percentage. So Andres Jimenez here, uh, looking at his ratings, he should. I would expect him to be a guy who hits for a slightly above average average, who has some gap power and hits for a decent amount of doubles and triples, has a couple home runs, average number of walks, but certainly not the kind of guy who hits 328 in a season and leads the American League in batting average and on-base percentage. Certainly not the kind of guy who puts up a six and a half war season. And again, looking at 2022, which was, of course, a real season for him, he put up similar statistics. So if you were looking at Jimenez and relying on his statistics, you would think, well, wow, this guy, he's MVP caliber player almost. He's exceptionally strong defensively at a critical position where there really isn't a lot of depth. He's a great hitter. He runs the bases very well. A must-have, almost a franchise cornerstone. He's still pre-arbitration. Absolutely not the case. He's a strong player. He plays a good, or he plays good defense at an important position, and is not a bad hitter with strong base running. But he is really more of like a three, three and a half WAR player than a six and a half WAR player, as he is seen here, or maybe more like a four WAR player. I keep forgetting that defense in OT or live OTP games is a little bit less now. Uh, but essentially. Jimenez is just nowhere near as good as his statistics would lead you to believe. People likely overpay for Jimenez or would trade their entire team to get him, even if that is absolutely not the right choice if you're evaluating him based on his statistics. Anyways, next I'm going to use a minor league example, which is a case where it would be even worse to evaluate a player based on their statistics. Now, Drew Jones, for me, is probably the top center field prospect in live starts by a decent margin. He's pretty well developed for his age. He has exceptional center field defense, and he's still a pretty strong hitter overall, um, especially for the position. So if you were to look at him for his statistics, which do not account for potential at all, mind you, he looks like a pretty poor player. Average OPS plus at high A and uh, 80 OPS plus at double A? It's pretty underwhelming. So naturally, if you're valuing Lawler based on his statistics, he looks like a burnt prospect or something. He's just not hitting very well in the minors. How can I possibly expect him to be a particularly productive MLB player? Probably time to trade him off. But of course, this is just not the case at all. He's an exceptional prospect, extremely talented, good chance of hitting his potential, exceptional potential overall. If he reaches this, he's one of the top center fielders in all of baseball. And of course, he's then cost controlled for you when he gets developed. So again, I just cannot recommend or I cannot emphasize enough how strongly I would not evaluate players based on their minor league statistics. Sample size is even smaller than MLB. Statistics are far more variable in OTP than the real world. Uh, there's just a lot of problems with using this. They don't account for potential. They don't account for how probable a player is to develop. I, I could go on, really, about the number of problems with 
evaluating players based on statistics, especially minor leaguers or amateurs. Uh, but essentially here, there's another reason why evaluating players by statistics is problematic in OTP. In real baseball, extremely complicated sport, there's a lot of things that go into a player's success. Every tiny little detail about a player's body motion when they swing, or when they're diving for a ball defensively, or when they're pitching. Every single thing has an effect on the player's performance. Every tiny detail changes the velocity of the pitch, the spin rate, the spin axis, the spin efficiency, everything matters. There's a lot of stuff to consider. So it's very difficult for a scout in real baseball to assess all of those things and consider everything. So that's why we have statistics. We're trying to match things up with how players perform to evaluate how they're going to perform going forwards. And that is ultimately what we're trying to do with player evaluation. Assess how a player will do in the future. Real baseball, very difficult to do. Statistics do a much better job of it than scouts ever could because of how complicated it is. And because we have a lot of advanced statistics in real baseball that are doing a better job every time we get new statistics about matching things up to a player's potential performance going forwards. Noticing that these things affect this, so therefore we can expect that going forwards. But in OTP, none of that exists. OGP is not some super deep, complicated game. It's not a perfect imitation of real baseball, and it is a very straightforward engine. It is a very simple batter versus pitcher matchup, outcomes based. What does that mean? Well, here on the batter's card, we got five ratings Babbitt, which is mixed into contact, gap power, home run power, eye discipline, and avoid Ks. Each of these ratings affects an outcome that a batter can produce. Avoid Ks is how often they're going to strike out. I slash discipline is how many times they're going to walk. Home run power is how many home runs they hit. Gap power is doubles and triples. BABIP is the batting average on balls in play. Each of those things is an outcome that the player has a chance to produce. The higher they are, the more likely the player is to make them. So in real or in OTP, when you're trying to build a model based on statistics, maybe what you're trying to do is correlate strikeouts to avoid Ks, or walks to eye discipline, or home runs to home run power, or doubles and triples to gap, or uh, batting average of balls in play to batting average of balls in play once you drive it out of contact. It's a lot more straightforward than real baseball, but the thing is that there is very little to build your model off of. You don't have a lot of things that go into each thing, so it's more difficult to determine how a player is going to perform going forward since your model is less intricate and detailed based on or what when you're considering a player's statistics it's a lot more difficult to predict how a player is going to perform going forwards based on their statistics so essentially uh let's say you have a five a swing of five home runs during the regular season you're like a true 20 home run guy but you hit 25 in a year that's perfectly normal that happens all the time that could be a difference of about 10 home run power in terms of your evaluation of a player, which is a horrific mistake to make, assuming a player, the difference between 60 and 70 home run power is absolutely astronomical in terms of a player's value. So if you make that mistake and consider a player to be five to 10 points higher home run power than they actually are just based on a natural swing in their statistics, that is, uh, that's obviously a big problem. So the other thing is in real baseball, you don't have very obvious indicators of this lines up to this outcome that a player has, but in OTP, you absolutely do. Every single rating here tells you how a player will perform going forwards. You are given that information. Your scout, if you do your scouting system right, and I have a video on scouting, I'm probably gonna make a new one soon because of things I've seen recently. Uh, you're never going to be more than five points off. For major leaguers and minor leaguers, many times, you're often going to be right on point and, again, never more than five points off. For prospects, you sometimes, for amateurs, you'll be more off than that for particularly young players, but most of the time, your scout's going to be right on point. And again, for the super young players, statistics literally mean jack. So you have no choice but to rely on your scout because your scout is always going to be more accurate than anything else you can get in player evaluation. Your scout is probably not going to tell you that Drew Jones is a 70 across the board batting potential player. 
or a 30 like his statistics might employ or something. So uh, with that, I'm just going to conclude. The ratings that you are given on your player are almost always going to be pretty close to accurate with a good scout, and those ratings tell you how a player will perform directly. Statistics do not tell you that. So never use statistics to evaluate your players. Always rely on ratings. I hope this video is helpful for you guys, and I'll see you on the next one.